Hey guys, I'm here in White Springs, Florida with my buddy Mark, and we are uh, going to be dodging a hurricane for the next two days. So I'm ready to go fishing. I'm ready to just blast some fish. Bienville is an amazing place. It's got 11 trophy managed lakes in it. Um, and then it's got, gosh, he's the uncountable number of little bitty small little pothole ponds that have never been fished so when you guys come down for the uh the kayak bass fishing seminar that me and chad hoover are putting together putting together in december uh we're gonna have a little tournament we're gonna have a whole lot of fun and these kayaks the kayaks that we're gonna be fishing out of are uh, are gonna be able to slide into those little potholes i hope to get into one today uh this storm's gonna it's hurricane matthew and it's uh it's going to dictate what we do today. I'd love to get that, that uh, big rig up there in the water, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens today. It's going to be either today or Saturday, but tomorrow the hurricane's coming through. It's probably going to be a tropical storm when it hits us, so we'll get a lot of wind and a lot of rain, and that's about it. But uh, we're going to hunker down and, and bear with that tomorrow, but today we're going to try to whack them before this stone, storm comes in. So stay tuned. <music> All right, guys, we just pulled out on this lake, Lake Preston. Um, it's going to be breezy today. I don't know how good my audio is going to keep up. I'm going to try to keep my, my microphone tucked away. Um, but uh, Lake Preston, from what the manager, the property manager says, has got some of the bigger fish in it. I don't know. But we're going to come try to figure it out. It's got hydrilla along the bank. A lot of the things I look for when I first get to a lake that I've never been to before. Well, one of, one of the cool things about Bienville is that these lakes are all different. Each of them has their own personality. Each of them is a different water color. Each of them has, has different cover and structure. So every one of them is gonna be totally different. And so as I go from lake to lake, I've gotta totally refigure them out. And, and uh, I mean, a lot of things are gonna be the same, but a lot of things are gonna be different. And it'll be the same because of the weather and everything else. But uh, this lake, I've noticed it's got hydrilla along the bank and it grows off the bank down into 10 foot of water. This is an old phosphate mine. So it's got deep water and then these big wings that I call them that are long points. Uh, I've already looked at this on, the, on Google Maps or Google Earth and it's got points that actually come out in the middle of the pockets. Uh, but. Uh, I'm gonna start off with a moving topwater bait. I don't know if this is gonna work because we saw most a lot of fish down deep in 10 foot of water, but I've got a big honk and whopper plopper on. And I may only make 10 casts with it before I lose confidence. But I'm hoping these fish are shallow and feeding just before this uh, this hurricane comes through. But uh, the, I got this big one with a, I guess they call this color monkey butt. So it might be pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna switch. Let's get rid of this. I'm not seeing any top water action, nothing coming to the surface. I'm seeing a lot of stuff down a little bit deeper. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna tie on a lipless crankbait and just burn the bank and see what happens. Pro I probably should be fishing slow, but. All right, so what I'm switching to is a, a gold and black um, rattle trap. And my thinking behind this, and I got 20 pound fluorocarbon, which may end up being a little bit tough to fish this just because it's stiffer. But my thinking behind fishing a, a lipless crankbait is it's windy. Lipless is real easy to cast in the wind. I can fish it at various depths uh, because I can let it sink down, slowly reel it back. And it fishes grass pretty easy. I get it hugging that hydrilla, I just pop it out. So I can try different actions and different speeds and different different depths and things like that and see what the see what the fish like is the reason why I chose a lipless. So Mark was working a kind of a flipping pitching bait. We were working it down the bank trying to figure out a depth these fish are at and he was just pulling up this brown junky grass. It wasn't really a hydrilla and I and I started looking around and realized there really wasn't any and the only hydrilla that we found was a long where the boat ramp was. So obviously somebody introduced hydrilla to this lake on their boat trailer. They didn't clean off after they left one of the other lakes and they came over here and dumped it in, which is okay because that's kind of what they want to happen to these lakes because they're all man-made uh, and they all, you know, it's just, they, they want cover and they want structure and hydrilla is an excellent cover, cover for, uh, for bass and for bait fish. So anyway, 
So we're going back towards the boat ramp and we're gonna fish this hydrilla because it's what creates the oxygen and it's pretty much a fish magnet this time of the year. At least that's my thought. So we'll see if we can catch some fish doing it. Boy, when, mm -hmm. <laughs> when round two happens, <laughs> it's gonna be something. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So one of the dis disadvantages to fishing Florida, Okeechobee, if you've got to take a dump, you can't get out of your boat. Here, you don't want to get out of your boat because they got big old stinking lizards on the bank. And I ain't getting eaten by a gator while taking a dump. I just don't think that's a way to go. It's not. That, that, was, that wasn't in the plan. <laughs> Pretty pitiful way to go, huh? <laughs> Yep. But if I have any bigger tournaments on Champlain, you got one? Yeah, you want the net? I'll tell you in a minute. Nope. Landed on his head. First fish of the day. A little white bass. I mean, white largemouth bass. They're all very light in color. Yeah, boy, he hit it. He's shallow. Cool. All right, so what I was doing there is uh, just throwing this little flipping bait. I downsized. I had a vile craw in here. I just felt like it was a little bit too big. So I downsized to a little Rage Menace. And I don't know if that really made a difference because I hit him on the flipping head and he bit just as soon as the, the thing hit the water. But anyway, the good thing is, is there's a fish here. Oh, I thought I got another bite, but I didn't. There there's, was a fish here, so there's going to be more in the area, or at least that's what I'm hoping. And another thing about the grass is if the lake comes up, lake level comes up, if you've got like grass that's in shallow water and the bank is shallow, is you'll get an inside grass line. Yeah. And they'll move up into that inside grass line. There's a bite. Oh, man. All right, so let me turn the camera and show you guys kind of what we're doing. Just throwing to the bank, there's hydrilla that's sitting right along the bank right up in here and it drops down and the hydrilla grows all the way to 10 feet deep and then there's a there's a shallow air or sh the outside edge of the sh the, uh, the hydrilla is about two feet you know, a foot to two feet deep and uh, we saw a bunch of fish stacked up on there on the fish finder but uh, that one I just caught was way up shallow so they just maybe just buried in this grass and just hanging out in this little pocket the wind's been blowing into this pocket since yesterday Lots of bait fish under the under the boat. Just a lot of life. All right, so let me kind of explain to you guys what, how I'm fishing this grass. I kind of put a speed tail, you know, little speed worm on here, um, paddle tail worm. But uh, I'm throwing it up into the shallower grass, and I'm just dragging it off and fishing it kind of like a Carolina rig, not really bouncing or hopping, just trying to drag it through the grass. Um, and uh, once I get to the outside edge of the grass line and I don't feel any grass tension anymore, I, and I've pulled it you know, three or four feet past it, I don't go any further. I reel it back to the boat. Um, only because I've already established the fact that the bass are in the grass. They're not out from the grass. But until I establish that, I'm going to work it all the way back to the boat, but I don't have to do that anymore. And I'm, I'm just dragging just like I would on, if it was on the bare bottom. Just trying to keep it up at the top of the grass, keep it from sinking down inside of it, which I have a lightweight on there, so it shouldn't do that anyway. And just slowly working it through the grass. There's one. I was just gonna throw that point, that point. A decent one. Yep, I saw these when we motored over it earlier. Same deal? Same deal, come on, dude. Good one right there. He thumped it too. There was no mistake in that. Oh. So I took that punch, I had a punch skirt on this to deal and I took it off, put on a black and red vile craw. Uh, don't ask me why I put black and red on there. This is clear water, but I don't know, just a feeling I had. And earlier I had idled over that area and no, I've been noticing a lot of schools of fish, larger fish, and this is a private lake and it doesn't have any, the, all the larger fish are pretty much bass. And so I saw them and uh, marked it 
and just went idle around, looked around and came back and that's exactly where I saw those fish, was eight feet deep off of this little island. Uh, I can't turn my, hey, maybe I can turn it, nope. Anyway, off this little island up here and uh, got to that spot, boom, and got bit. So we're gonna throw back in there see if we can catch another one. All right, so what I think we're gonna do is put it on the trailer and just go over the other side of the street to another lake, uh, what they call the Numbers Lake. And they say there's big ones in there, but we just want to go get our line tugged. So we're going to go uh, mess around over there and try to figure that out uh, that lake out. Start all over. All right, so what we've done is we've moved over to Scott's Bay. That, and real quick, we realized there wasn't any submerged grass in it, which is no big deal. There's plenty of fish in it. Um, and as soon as we pull, we dropped the, the boat in the water, I looked down in, on the fish finder and, and there were bait fish in eight feet of water. So we're still dealing with about the same depth. There were fish in the area. And so what I did is I've got 12 pound test fluorocarbon on this reel and I tied on a 3XD, which will, and with 12 pound test will dive about 10 feet deep. So to get me down to that depth, I may want to get something that dives a little bit shallower, but we'll see. This lake is completely void of, of grass and trees and cover or anything. So we went to just looking for the structure that holds the fish. Once again, six to eight feet deep. Um, and I finally, you know, running around looking for bait fish and finally said, you know what, let's just start fishing points. First or second cast up on a point, had one hammer it. Mark's just caught two while I was sitting there rigging up a Carolina rig. So we found some and they're all good quality fish. They're just not big ones. But they said this is the newest lake, so we're not expecting anything huge, just good quality, healthy fish. Get him. We found something. And the storm is getting closer. 